Hello everyone, I'm Jordan Dancer and I'm joined by my sister and friend Rebecca Bardul and we're continuing our conversation today on accountability partners. So if you check in our previous video we talked about how to choose an accountability partner and now we want to talk about how to be an accountability partner and what sort of things go into that. Yeah, so I think if you're in this position, this means that someone has reached out to you and yeah. wants you to be their accountability partner. So what do you do? Yeah. It's a challenging situation, yeah. maybe. I think the first thing uh, to kind of think about is is to remember that um, we have a call to do this sort of thing, right? This is yes. something. This isn't something we should just, you know, shirk off and say, "Oh, this is unimportant." It's not like someone inviting you to the movies or something like mm -hmm. that, right? This yes. is a, a serious obligation. Um, in Galatians six verses one and two, it talks about bearing each other's burdens, and that's how we fulfill the law of Christ. How um, really being spiritual, if we're really spiritual, then we're pulling people out of faults and helping them overcome that. So this is a sign of Christian maturity, a sign of Christian growth, and, and part of what Christ has destined us to be as the people of God. So we shouldn't just ignore this. Yeah. Um, but what should we do? Yeah, totally. So if you're in this position, what, how do you get to a place where you can be comfortable and you can move forward being that accountability partner? I think the first thing is consider if you're able. Yes. <laughs> and if you're not able, be willing to say no. Yeah. And that's an okay spot to be in. You know, sometimes we need to do a self-assessment. Where are you at? Are you at a spot mentally and spiritually where you can take this on and be someone's accountability partner? Yeah. Well, let's just say like, yeah, I mean, let's just say like, you get really good at this, yeah. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people are asking you at some level, there's just a workload right. issue, right? Of jobs and professional obligations. And, and obviously we, we need to, to, to give and to mm -hmm. sacrifice and, and to bear our lives for, for the glory of Christ and the good of our sisters and brothers. But at right. some point, um, we're not going to be functional in helping someone else overcome this. So yes. we need to just think about, do I have the mental space, the physical space, and all, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and don't let the flattery of someone asking you um, put them in a bad situation and you in a bad situation. You know, yeah. it feels really nice that you're at a spot in your, in your spiritual well-being where someone can come to you and ask for yeah. advice and ask for accountability. But don't let that flattery take over the fact that this is a serious situation. We're dealing with sin. We're dealing with growth spiritually. So we need to take it seriously. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the first time you get asked is really the time where this can be especially yeah. uh, dangerous if you mm -hmm. if you deal with, with pride at all or arrogance or any sorts of those things. Sure. Um, because it, it's ripe to, to say, oh, I feel so good. Look at me. Look at yes. me. And you don't even think about it. You say, well, of course. And then... Um, you know, that's, <laughs> it, it can be less than helpful if we're not careful. Right. Any yeah. other guard, guardrails we want to keep up as we think about yeah, whether to so do this or not? I think the next thing to do, so if you're able, if you're going to commit to this, you need to define the relationship, kind of a DTR, if you will. So they need to know what they're agreeing to. And accountability is something that, you know, we're going to take very seriously. We're going to be pretty strict with it. We might be holding someone's feet to the fire at some point. So we need to decide is this going to be something that we can work together on? And is this going to be something that you're committing to? Yeah, exactly. And I think that goes goes into the idea of as we consider this and are defining this, is, is this an appropriate relationship to right. even have, yeah. right? If this is a, as we mentioned, kind of in our, our, our deal with picking an accountability partner, mm -hmm. that if there's a, a male-female dynamic going on, especially with sexual sin and all that sort of stuff, right. we may need to take a step back, right? Yes, so yes. what sort of relationship, what sort of sin are we looking to overcome? That sort of thing. And I think one of the first things once we get to that, we're like, okay, this is this is an appropriate relationship to have. Um, contact frequency, okay? Yeah. How often are they expecting you to reach out to them? Are you expecting them to reach out to you? Because if this is a, a critical situation, um, you know, maybe where someone's coming off a, a, a drug overdose or right. something like that, an intensive rehab and things like that, where they're needing texts multiple times a day, you need to know that. Yes. And if they're expecting texts like once a week or something like that, you also need to know that so that you don't miss it. Yeah, I totally agree. You need to know how often to contact and you need to know if you're going to be able to commit to that. And and on top of that, I think you need to know, is this the type of person that needs that kind of frequent contact? Is this the type of person that needs you to back off a little bit? What's their personality? How does that play into this? Um, that's kind of important to know. Um, I think the next thing too is sometimes there's going to be times where they mess up. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's going to be times where we fail and you're going to need to hold their feet to the fire. You may need to, you know, um, rebuke them a little bit. We see times in scripture where sure. that's necessary. Rebuke is necessary. But doing that out of love and making sure that each of you are on the same page about, hey, if I do this, if this is a time where you need rebuked, I'm doing it out of love for your soul and for you and, and making sure we're, we're on the same page about that. Yeah, and how that's going to come across, right? Yes, Some people yeah. are very into, you know, soft, gentle, you can do it, and they just really respond well to that. Yeah, yeah. Some of us have more 
um, aggressive personality sure. type, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, stubbornness. Yeah, maybe. stubbornness. <laughs> yeah, and like you kind of got to call us out, and you got to break us down a yeah. little bit, and like you got to figure out, you know. How are they going to respond so that you can be the person they need to be? And ask yourself if you can be the person that they need for this. Yeah, I totally agree. So as you're defining the relationship, I think another thing that's super important is making sure that there is a trust and a willingness to be open in this relationship. Yeah, definitely. You know, if I come to you, Jordan, and I don't trust you at all, <laughs> and we have no, like, um, uh, reputation with each other we have no kind of background there's going to be a, a difficultness to open up about the sin that mm -hmm. i'm going through the sin that he's going through or with someone else and so we need to make sure that that trust is there and that there's a willingness to be open with each other and sure. honest well and yeah and an understanding of what kind of um what kind of level of trust and what level of, of secrecy and privacy are we going to have yeah. here, right? Is this the sort of thing where they're asking you not to tell your spouse mm -hmm. or they're asking you not to tell various people? And we're not going to give counsel any anyway because there's just sure. too many situations yeah. where that may or may not be appropriate and all those sorts of things. But you just want to be on the same page with that mm. um, because they may say, well, you can't tell your husband this or you can't tell your wife yeah. this or whatever it is. And you're like, no, that's a no fly for me. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to to have violated trust just because you didn't mean to or you didn't know yeah. that you were going to. Yeah, I totally agree. And that vulnerability in that relationship is really important yeah. because if I'm not willing to be open with someone about my yep. sin, but I'm asking them to hold me accountable, that's not going to really go well. Sure. We, we got to be open. We got to be vulnerable. And I think vice versa, as the accountability yeah. partner, you have to be willing to be vulnerable and open as well. It goes both ways, yeah. You know, because if someone comes to you and they're asking you to um, listen to them while they're pouring their heart out about their sin or to hold them accountable about this, you got to let them know that you're human too. Yeah. You know, we struggle with these things too. It's you're not alone, and this is something that we're going to do together and not just um, rebuke every time you mess up, Yeah, right? exactly. Well, one of the things we talked about in the video about um, how to pick an accountability partner is this idea of you want to have respect for them, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And as, as someone who is the accountability partner, we, we want to use that and leverage that, but we don't want to put on this air that, oh, we've got all the answers right. and we've got it all yeah. figured out and we've never once struggled with this because that's, <laughs> that's just frankly not the truth. Yeah, that's right? not what we're going for, it's right? As Christians, we know that each of us has fallen short in sin. And so that's the relationship that we want to bring with each other in this body. So yeah, what do you think? Yeah, and I think also just uh, one last thing in terms of what sort of expectations we have is, you know, are we going to be studying together? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be meeting and reviewing accountability reports? Are we meeting in person? Yeah. Uh, are we going to be going through a book together? Do you want me to prepare studies? I, do you, uh, are we going through a Bible book or a secular right. book? All the, I mean, whatever yeah. it is, um, let's just all get on the same page. Think yeah, about there's these lots of ways to go about this. So make sure that you're on the same page. You, you DTR, you define the relationship, <laughs> yeah. and, and go forward with there. So now that you've done that, um, own the situation. Yeah. You're the accountability partner. Own it. And really bearing each other's burdens like Galatians 6 talks about yeah. means to take it on. You're you're fighting this with them and you're in it with them and so devote yourself to that. Yeah. How can you do that? What are some ways to devote yourself to that? Yeah, I think one of the things we can do is we need to pray over the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, to yes. pray over them and their situation. That mm -hmm. this isn't just something that's on the back burner of our mind occasionally and right. when we meet once a week or whatever it is or once a month, that, that's the only time we think about it, but it's something where right. we're constantly devoted to them in prayer to, so that we can we can handle this together. Yeah, I totally agree. And with that comes consistency. That's you know, a big deal. if they ask you to check in on them, they ask you to be consistent, be consistent, be consistent in that yeah. and, and don't neglect that situation because that's important to their growth and it's important to the the respect of what you're doing as an accountability partner, you know? That's one of the biggest things that I think, um, th if I could say there's one attribute for accountability partners you need to have, this is the one that's super yeah, important. I agree. Um, because consistency is key when it comes to dealing with this. Um, I think another thing that we need to be aware of and thoughtful about is just um, having trial and error. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, because right. sometimes this is going to go really well, and sometimes things aren't going to work. Right. And we yeah. need to be willing to, to adjust with that. Yeah, I totally agree. And if you're the accountability partner, there might be times where you mess up. Yeah. There might be times where you forget to check in or you forget to say something or you forget to text them whenever they needed mm -hmm. that. And that's okay because we're human and yeah. we're, we're being open it's and vulnerable about sometimes. the fact that it's okay to mess up. But when it does mess up, when you do mess up, own it. Yeah, own it. And be okay with saying, you know what? That's my bad. I I messed up and I misled you there or I wasn't holding you accountable like you needed that. So let's get back on track. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah, you have to own that and you can't pretend like you've got it all together. <laughs> yeah, you totally really, agree. You yes. really don't own this. Because sometimes like you go to church together maybe and you mm -hmm. like, we're supposed to text this week yeah. or meet this week or send a verse. <laughs> and it's like you didn't and it's like you sit on different sides and yes. you kind of like, sort of slide by. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's not healthy and that's mm -hmm. not functional and that's not what we need. Yeah, I totally um, agree. 
agree. The last thing I think we, we need to talk about is just having a mindset for what's the duration of this going to be? Mm -hmm. um, is this like a week? Is this like a month? Is this sure. a year? Um, and a lot of it suggests to say, you know, put a time frame on it and say, we're going to do this level of contact, this level of expectation for fill in the blank. You know, it's two months, three months, six months or whatever it is. Right. And then we're going to reevaluate. And, you know, some sins, people get it under control in like a couple weeks and it's just like the actual reaching out and the saying, yeah. hey, I need help and it's fixed. Yeah. And then we're just kind of doing maintenance. But some people need intensity on that. And so just be mindful of this doesn't have to go on forever. Right. Yeah. And, and be OK with whenever it's time to stop, stop. Because sometimes that extra reminder of that sin after they've already dealt with this is not going to be helpful or fruitful for them into the sure, future. Sure, for pounding them over yeah. the head with it, yeah. Right, and you don't need it anymore. And so whenever it's time to, to stop or draw away from that, be okay with putting it down and saying, you know what, we've dedicated time to this and I'm confident in your ability to handle this as a person yeah. and moving forward. And if you ever need help again, reach back out. Yeah, here right? we are. Yeah, yes. so I think those those really simple things of just think about if you're able yes. um, to, to, to really consider can you do this, uh, to, to define what the expectations mm -hmm. are, and then own it and to lean into it and to bear that burden with them. I think those are some really helpful things. Yeah, I totally agree. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to make sure you don't miss any videos for the Minute Collective. Do you have any questions or anything you'd like to add about the subject? If you do, leave those comments along with suggestions for future content. Thanks again.